peeps, welcome back to Projects Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to go over all the different kinds of lock stitches in each stitch. So let's get to it. So what is a tack and lock stitch? A tack stitch is where an embroidery project starts out by locking down your thread to your material before it begins, say, a satin stitch. And a lock stitch is on the other side at the very end to lock down that thread so everything doesn't come unraveled. And we'll cover all the different kinds of lock stitches and tack stitches that there are and embroider them up to test them out for you. So we actually got this as a request from one of our viewers asking what's going to be a stronger lock stitch than just the half stitch. So this is kind of just going beyond what the normal default settings are. So we're in Inkscape and we're just using our 4x4 hoop and we're just going to draw a simple line that we can create into a satin stitch to show you how to do this. We're going to go ahead and use our Bezier tool to just create a simple line here and then we're going to use a tool that we discussed in another video which is Live Path Effect to thicken it up into a satin. And there you go, a nice satin stitch there. So we're going to go ahead and copy this out nine additional times because there's 10 different types of lock stitches that you can do. One of which is a custom lock stitch where you can define exactly how you want it to go. So we're going to go ahead and make the copies using this one and then we're going to go ahead and make those settings. Okay, now I'm just going to use my alignment tool real quick to get these all aligned. So we're going to go ahead and select on this first one here and just kind of show you where the settings are for your lock stitches. So in params, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see that you have the ability to turn on or off your lock stitches and tack stitch. So you can go ahead and turn them off completely if you want. But the reason you want lock stitches on, especially for satins, is because satins can get unraveled pretty easily because they're less stable than other types of stitches. And it defaults here with this half stitch. But you'll notice we can also choose from one of the other types of lock stitches and tack stitches here to make those adjustments and use a different type of lock stitch. So for this first one, we're just gonna leave as half stitch and close that. And for the second one, we're gonna go ahead and choose this arrow stitch. And you'll notice as soon as you change it to a different type of stitch, like arrow, you have the ability to adjust the size of that lock stitch. So it defaults to 100%, but you could also, if the size of this little triangle here is too big for your design, you could shrink it down by uh, lowering the percentage. You can see it gets smaller there. Or you can decide to make it bigger by increasing the size. Of course, I don't know why you would want an arrow that size, mm -hmm. but for this particular test, we're just gonna leave it default for all of our different types of locks so that you can see those and we can test those out for you. So we'll do the same thing for the lock and hit apply and quit. And there's your back and forth. There's your bow tie. There's your cross. There's your star. There's your symbol. There's your triangle. There's your zigzag. Now for your custom, you actually have to do some defining here, but it's actually pretty simple. For your custom path, you're going to define how many millimeters your stitch is going to go kind of back and forth. Mm -hmm. And the scale tack stitch, the 0.7 here is, I guess, how forward it goes uh, into your design. What we'll do is we'll just kind of enter in some numbers and then we'll go into the simulator realistic preview to show you kind of how this goes. I'm just gonna use some large numbers to exaggerate the effect. Uh, but what you wanna do is you wanna put in some values that you want for your custom lock stitch. And then you wanna separate them by a space and that will define the distance between the length of each stitch. So I'm just going to, again, just exaggerate using some big values here to show what this is going to do. And I'm just gonna copy this to put it on the lock and we'll hit apply and quit. So for this last one, we'll go ahead and show you what that would look like in the realistic preview. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this real quick and we'll go back to the beginning so you can see exactly what's happening here. 
you can see we get this big jump and then there's some stitches here that go forward into your design and then back into your design. And we haven't quite figured out exactly how to make this lock look exactly the way we want it, but you can see it is custom and it would probably do a pretty good job of locking down the design. And you can see when it goes towards the end, it locks itself again. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and embroider these out and we'll do some tests on them. We'll try to pull on them a little bit and see if any come unraveled. So they all stitched out really nice. You can see that there are some artifacts to the locking stitch or the tack stitch here on the front, kind of sticking out towards the bottom here, especially on our custom down here that obviously we need to work on settings there, but that was on purpose a little bit to kind of show the difference. But now we're just gonna do a little bit of a test to see if we can get these to come up. I wanted to show the back a little bit. Again, everything is locked down really nicely. Now let's see how easy it is to pull these up, so. That's actually down pretty well with that half stitch there. And that's good there. That's really good there. Yeah, I mean, all of these lock stitches really seem to do their job. Like, there's really nothing wrong with any of them here, except probably our custom. This one's really good here because it kind of went in the middle. I can't even peel anything up there. So our custom is probably the weakest because I could grab this and probably just, yeah. See, I could probably break that right there. The custom is probably the worst one because we didn't set it up right. But on the other side, it, for some reason, did set up a whole lot better. So again, all of these are locked down really nice. So really, I think it's just personal preference on how you want your lock stitches to go down, but these are all really good. Let's see if we can torture them some more. So after messing around with all the different tack and lock stitches, what have you taken away from this experience? They all kind of work. There's really <laughs> no noticeable difference that I can tell other than some of them have very small artifacts um, off to the side that again, it's just part of, you know, like if you're going to make a cross or a star as part of your lock stitch, it's going to be on the outside of that satin, but not very noticeable at all. Honestly, surprised all of the lock stitches seem to perform the way that they're supposed to, which is locking down the material. You know, obviously the more stitches that are part of the lock, the more stable that it will be for maybe thicker satins that you may have. So what we've learned is it's kind of personal preference on which tack and lock you decide to use. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you don't mind every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.